Um, welcome uh, to our Invest in Toulouse roundtable. If you have any questions, please do put them in the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen. We will have a few minutes um, at the end of today's session for you to um, have your questions answered. Um, we're going to try and stick promptly to our one hour slot uh, so that we don't take up too much of people's time. But obviously, any additional questions uh, afterwards, please do let the team know. Um, so without further ado, I will hand over to Jean-Claude uh, Dardelet, our moderator for today. He's the Vice President of Toulouse Metropole and Deputy Mayor of Toulouse. Um, over to you, Jean-Claude. Thank you very much, Kate, and uh, welcome to everyone. Welcome to Toulouse, actually. Um, so France and uh, Toulouse in particular have uh, uh, a very special and long history with the United Kingdom. For example, we, we play golf, we play rugby, and even sometimes we, we win the six nation tournaments. Um, so Toulouse is a city that counts uh, about 500,000 inhabitants. Uh, one fourth are students, one fourth uh, are working in uh, high technologies. Uh, Toulouse Metropolis on its side counts more than 700,000 uh, inhabitants and the Toulouse urban area counts more than uh, 1.3 million uh, inhabitants. Uh, these figures have continuously growth, grown over the, the years uh, by more than 10,000 inhabitants uh, every year. Uh, and it continued even during the, the COVID pandemic, uh, although uh, many people thought that uh, uh, people would leave uh, the large cities uh, during the COVID. Uh, we continued in Toulouse uh, to, to, to observe uh, this growth uh, at this level, the very first city in France with such a, a high uh, demogra demographic growth. Um, one of the reasons is, of course, that Toulouse continues to be the preferred cities for investors, researchers, families, uh, students, as reported by so many reports uh, in France and, uh, and in Europe uh, as well. Also because Toulouse is a very international city connected to the outside uh, world, thanks to uh, what we call here uh, the virtuous uh, triangle of excellencies. Excellencies in uh, academies, excellencies in uh, R&D, research and development, and uh, excellencies in uh, industries as well. At this stage, I can almost hear you uh, wondering, uh, now this guy will tell us everything about aeronautics and space. Actually, no. Uh, of course, Toulouse is uh, the Airbus city. Uh, Toulouse is the world capital of aviation and the European capital for space. Of course, the NATO Space Center of Excellence is presently settling in Toulouse. Of course, the last month's European summit, space summit in Toulouse has triggered new impetus uh, a new budget in space, uh, be it in uh, climate monitoring, uh, telecoms, navigation, uh, exploration, uh, oceans, etc. Uh, of course, Airbus is nowadays uh, all about decarbonation and uh, digitalization with billions of euros investments. But uh, no, my point today will be on how easy it is to settle in Toulouse, how easy it is to innovate in Toulouse, to produce, to connect with partners in synergy on how easy it is to recruit uh, and to develop businesses in a variety of domain. Toulouse is indeed, is indeed all about investments. Uh, if I take the period going from 2014 to 20, it is no less than 4 billion euro that the Toulouse Metropolis has invested uh, along the period in synergies, of course, with all the monies invested by Europe, by France, by the regions, and by all the, the private investors. If I take the period going from 2021 to 26, Toulouse Metropolis only would invest more than 7 billion this time. So it's, uh, the, the, these amounts are, are quite important. All the, the amount that have been invested so far in the last years have already made Toulouse a new capital in four domains. The first one is mobility in general, including drones and the brand new uh, urban air mobility incubator uh, with other types of uh, automated uh, vehicles, uh, hydrogen production and storage, uh, not even mentioning the European largest uh, Congress on uh, intelligent transport uh, systems. Another domain is health, including bioproductions, solutions against cancer, 
from the researcher bench to the patient bed, uh, Toulouse has always ranked in the very first hospital uh, in Europe, all specialties included, but cancer being uh, one of the, of the specialties of Toulouse. The third would be artificial intelligence and cybersecurity with one of the four national institute of artificial intelligence, but also with the world leader in uh, cybersecurity, namely the company Thales. Last but not least, the domain of uh, bio, ag agro, agritech, with a wide variety of new te technologies from farms to forks, as you know it from, uh, from uh, what the priorities of the European Union, from lines of, well, lines of code to new ways of uh, feeding the populations. So if France is the state startup nations, I would say is that uh, Toulouse is the capital. Four nuggets that have recently joined, uh, settled in Toulouse have joined us today to share with you how much Toulouse is an easy living city, how much Toulouse is a cost attractive and a technology oriented city, how also how much Toulouse is an all inclusive uh, city where firms and industries can first find their clients, customers, where they can find their employees, they can find their partners, uh, they can also have uh, the families of all their employees uh, enjoy uh, uh, an easy way of, uh, of living and connections to the outside world. So with us today, we have four guests. Uh, may I introduce you first, uh, Craig uh, Johnston. He's a chief operating officer of the company Evotech. He's also the president of Evotech uh, France. Uh, so Evotech is a life science company, but I will let, you, let him the floor in a few moments to, to explain uh, the company in more details. We will have then uh, Corinne Grillet, who is a co-founder and CEO of the company uh, Align Incorporated. Uh, from San Francisco. She'll, she's uh, speaking with us today from San Francisco. Uh, we can see it from uh, her background uh, uh, screen. We'll then have Gilbert Gagnier, who is a CEO and founder of the company EasyMile, a software engineer and visionary on uh, automated vehicle. And then uh, the floor will be led to Nicola Cullen from uh, Nicola Cullen Partner uh, from the law firm named Alt Altis. Uh, okay, so may I let the floor to Craig Johnson now. Craig, the floor is yours. Thanks, Owen Claude. Uh, thanks very much for the invitation. It's really a pleasure to pleasure to be with you all today. Um, so as John Claude said, my name is Craig Johnson. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Evotech. I've been with Evotech 10 years. Um, uh, Evotech is a, is a European uh, research and development company. Um, we are headquartered in Germany, but we have sites operating in Germany, the UK, France, and I'll come to a bit more detail about that, of course. Um, Italy, Austria, and uh, on both coasts of the United States. We have around, well, over 4,000 employees today, um, about uh, almost 1,000 employees in France and about 1,000 employees in the UK. Um, we're, we're a bit of an unusual company. We have an unusual and quite unique business model. We consider ourselves uh, lucky to be a profitable biotech and we we um, provide all our research and development and indeed all the way through to commercial manufacturer capabilities for all of our partners all across the uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, we work with uh, pharma big and small um, uh, also biotech of, of, of often operating in the virtual space where they uh, use us for almost all of their of their research and development activities, and we also work with uh, a large number of not for profits and foundations, mission based uh, foundation uh, organisations. Um, we arrived in Toulouse in two thousand fifteen, uh, and at that time we took over um, uh, the main part of a former Sanofi research and development. Uh, site in the south side of the city, and that's when I arrived in Toulouse personally. So I was based uh, with Evotech in the UK and moved to Toulouse with my family uh, to, um, to live uh, and work in the city. We started off with around about 200 employees who were transferred uh, into Evotech, and over that uh, period of seven years, we've grown tremendously, and indeed we ended up acquiring the site in full in, uh, in 2020. Uh, we've also recruited heavily during that time. We are currently 
uh, around 800 employees on the site. So having gone from 200 to 800, I guess that's one of the themes that uh, will perhaps be of relevance to you and I'd be happy to ask it, answer any questions you might have about that. And then um, our growth trajectory is not finished, far from it. We are, if anything, only just at the beginning. Um, uh, but last year we made a commitment to add a new building on the site, which will be the home of what we consider a, a, a biologics manufacturing facility of the future, which will uh, begin construction this year and will be online. Uh, in the second half of 2024. And so that will take our, our operations to Toulouse to a whole new dimension. With that, I'll pause there. Um, back to you, Jean-Claude. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, may I now let the floor to uh, Corinne Grillet, who is a co-founder uh, and CEO of uh, Aligned Incorporated. So she's in from San Francisco, but recently settled uh, in Toulouse, so the, the company helps investors, consumers and companies to align their action uh, by providing uh, objective information about the company uh, derived from uh, PDI, so yeah. public digital information. So I let you the floor, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Claude, and, and, and very pleased to be there, even if it's a bit probably earlier than, than, than you in, uh, in Europe. So um, uh, as, as Jean-Claude mentioned, Align, we are a technology startup based both in uh, California and in Toulouse. And we co-founded Align pretty much to address the following problem that consumers and investors are no longer complacent about the values their money supports. So they understand it can contribute positively or negatively to causes they care about, such as, for instance, environment or social topics. Unfortunately, they are hindered by the lack of simple, comprehensive and transparent data. And usually when the information exists, this is mainly about the largest public corporation, but not about smaller companies. So what do we do in essence at Align? We build and we provide tools to radically simplify the mass production, availability, and transparency of data around environmental, social, and governance uh, topics. Uh, we, uh, to do that, um, we use, uh, as Jean-Claude mentioned, uh, a pretty large number of publicly digital uh, information uh, available across the web, and we use uh, a lot of uh, AI, so intelligence artificial, and especially uh, NLP, Natural Language Processing Technology. Uh, we arrived in Toulouse uh, actually exactly one year ago, so that's our one year anniversary, uh, uh, having operating in the, in the city. Um, and uh, to all that was mentioned uh, by Craig, for us, there were a few other uh, reasons why we did choose Toulouse uh, to install our subsidiary. It's, it's a much smaller scale than Evotech, we, today we have three full-time employees uh, in the city, engineer and, and obviously developer working on the NLP, so natural language processing models. Uh, one of the additional reasons key for us is that Toulouse uh, is one of the four uh, center of excellence chosen by the French government for intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence with ANITI, which is the artificial and natural intelligence Toulouse Institute and they have some specialty around natural language processing. So again, Toulouse uh, is not uh, purely around aerospace and aviation. We have nothing to do with that actually. Uh, we, are, we are doing uh, you know, uh, things around language, natural language, semantics, bias in, uh, in AI models. So no, not at all related to um, uh, to the aerospace and, and there is a very strong knowledge in Toulouse with the, this institute and also across the different uh, schools, uh, engineering schools that are, that are present in the, in the city. So the, the talent pool and the, the ability to uh, work with this institute and, and doing some research together was, was key for us. The, the second point for me is the, the quality of infrastructures. Uh, it's actually extremely easy, cost, cost efficient and efficient to be operating in Toulouse. Um, I can think about transportation, which is very, very good business infrastructure. Um, and again, contrasting it from the Silicon Valley where I, where I sit, it's actually, you can go from anywhere to everywhere in Toulouse extremely 
quickly, you know, using public transportation. So the infrastructure are, are, are really good and that was key for us uh, as well. Uh, and I, I won't even mention quality of life, but that's uh, another aspect. So uh, yeah, for, for us adding to the previous point, definitely the, the, the strong um, skills in terms of AI uh, was, was key for us to relocate here. And, and again, the quality of infrastructure is the second important point. So back to you, Jean-Claude. Thank you very much, Corinne. Uh, let me now introduce our next speaker. This is uh, Gilbert Gagnier, CEO of uh, EasyMile. So the EasyMile, which uh, changes the world of uh, mobility. So. Uh, uh, Gilbert, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, I don't know uh, how successful we will be in changing the, the world of mobility, but at least we are trying hard. Um, so uh, in, a, in a nutshell, uh, what is, uh, is EasyMile? Uh, it's nothing like, uh, uh, like uh, Waymo. Uh, we are what we are. I mean, not, not a company uh, with uh, unlimited uh, funding uh, capabilities. We are at the moment only 260 uh, uh, people. Uh, so we, we need, uh, I mean, we need to, uh, to target something that we can actually, uh, actually achieve. Uh, so for the time being, uh, much more than uh, the mobility uh, of the people, we believe that uh, in the short term, uh, the uh, autonomous driving technology uh, will be able to, I mean, to deliver uh, some uh, commercial uh, uh, promises, uh, mainly uh, in uh, industrial facilities, uh, things like uh, port terminals, uh, airports, uh, large industrial sites, uh, car factories. Uh, there are many, many, many reasons for that that uh, I will not develop today, uh, but uh, uh, driving uh, on public roads uh, in mixed traffic while, uh, I mean, delivering the right level of safety uh, seems, uh, at least in the short term, beyond, uh, beyond any uh, reasonable reach. So what, what, what do we do uh, in Toulouse? Actually, I founded uh, the company in 2014. Uh, I'm not from Toulouse, so I deliberately uh, decided uh, uh, to end up in Toulouse. At that time, I was living in, in Singapore, so I've spent 15 years of my life uh, in Singapore. And when I decided to, uh, to incorporate EasyMile, I knew that uh, it would be in France. And uh, I, I mean, it was, Toulouse was just a rational choice. Uh, I wanted, uh, I mean, a city where I can uh, recruit uh, easily uh, IT engineers, uh, not for web design, not for video games, uh, but for real-time uh, embedded safety critical systems. And so the shortlist uh, is already quite, uh, quite short. Uh, you end up easily, uh, I mean, quickly with Paris, Lyon, maybe Bordeaux, uh, Toulouse and Grenoble, uh, and other criteria for me, very important was the, the quality of life. And that includes Paris. Uh, Paris is uh, exceptional when you're a tourist. Uh, I've, I've lived uh, 20 years uh, in Paris. Uh, every time I go back there, I remember why I left to Singapore. Uh, um, it's, I mean, the, the, the life quality in Paris be became horrible. Um, uh, and uh, the, the last criteria for me uh, was uh, the convenience uh, and the convenience in terms of uh, transport, not local transport, uh, because our playground is the world. Uh, we need to be able to move uh, from, uh, from our headquarters to pretty much anywhere on the planet uh, very efficiently. Uh, and uh, when you look at the toulouse blagnac Airport, at the same time, it's very uh, accessible from, uh, from downtown. It's like a 15 minutes drive uh, pretty much any time, except at peak hours in the morning. Uh, and, and from there, you can fly uh, directly to pretty much uh, any uh, major hub, at least in Europe. Uh, and there, there's also some uh, long haul flights departing from Toulouse. 
Uh, so convenience uh, of the airport uh, wa was also uh, a very important criteria for a company like Easy Mile, who pretty much from the beginning uh, opened a subsidiary uh, in Denver, uh, in Singapore, in Berlin, uh, and, uh, and in Australia, in Netherlands. Uh, so that's why th that's basically how we ended up uh, in Toulouse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gilbert. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I let the floor to Nicolas Kulan uh, from the Altige. So it's uh, uh, another, I would say, a leading law firm in, uh, in south of France, uh, which have experience in um, assisting uh, startups and uh, multinationals. So uh, uh, Nicolas, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, and thanks to the Invest in Toulouse team for inviting me to take part. Um, they do a really great job of working to attract investment in the region and um, giving practical help to businesses. Uh, so to introduce you to our company, so I'm uh, Nicholas Cullen. I'm a partner here um, in uh, tech and corporate law at Altige, which, uh, as Jean-Claude was saying, is a law firm headquartered in Toulouse. And uh, we, we work regularly with uh, Invest in Toulouse to help international investors to set up here in, in, in Southwest France. Uh, so that could be with corporate law advice on, on, on company structure and creation, assistance with transfers of IP, trademark registration, uh, negotiation of commercial leases, um, employment law advice when you're hiring people here, uh, data protection if your business involves personal data. So um, we provide that legal vision, obviously, which you need when you're setting up in a new territory. Um, and Altige um, has a history with Toulouse. Um, the, the firm was founded here uh, in 2002. So we're actually going to be celebrating our 20th birthday in May. Um, and I would say that our growth and development as a firm reflects the economic developments of the city and the region uh, in that time. Um, so today, you know, we're working with businesses which are now European leaders in their sectors um, and which were, were startups or smaller, you know, maybe family owned businesses um, when we started working together. Um, and, you know, we work with the main regional investment funds, uh, VC actors in, in the Southwest to help companies like that grow and scale. Um, and, and we as a firm have quite a clear identity as a tech firm. So we have a really strong IT, IP, data protection practices, um, which again is a reflection of the fact that Toulouse as a city and um, Occitanie as a region um, have, as well as a strong industrial fabric, this really great research base, uh, which means you have some really exciting tech projects here. Um, you know, which we've seen with the companies actually and, and, and the guys have just presented. Um, and, and, and the attractiveness of the region is, is underlined from our point of view in, in, in increasing external investment. And we're, we're more and more we're being asked for assistance from overseas investors who are either looking at buying businesses here or, or setting up subsidiaries. Um, and, uh, you know, that's across different sectors. Um, so I'm going to be really on message here and say that, you know, although when people think of Toulouse, they think immediately of Airbus and the aeronautics sector and maybe this, the, the space industry and satellites, um, possibly tourism as well. And, and, and you know, if, if it's your thing, the rugby um, and, you know, just as an, as an aside, and we can maybe talk about it in the Q&A. You can talk about the rugby industry in southwest France in the same way that you would associate, say, Liverpool, Manchester with football. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's quite a central thing for the, for the region here. Um, anyway, my overall point is that the industrial landscape here, not just limited to aero and space, but it cuts across medical, pharma, tech, um, construction, farming, agro, e-commerce, and, you know, that wider fabric of startups, which is why you have, you know, VC and growth capital activity here. Uh, and I think it's important to say that that underlying economic strength is allied to the lifestyle advantages, um, which means that people want to live here. And you know, that's borne out in those population statistics that, that we looked at earlier. Um, you know, Toulouse is one of France's fastest growing cities over the last 10 years. Um, there's these geographical advantages, you know, you're halfway between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. So there's these nice weekend getaways to the sea on both sides. Um, close to the Pyrenees, you can ski very easily in the winter. Um, obviously the weather is good um, and I, I suppose that personally I'm part of that influx of population into the city. Um, so I, I've been at Altige for five years now and previously I was at one of the big New York law firms in their Paris office uh, prior to that at a firm in the city of London 
Um, and, you know, personally speaking, those lifestyle factors were such a big draw in coming here. Uh, you know, we had young children, the schools were good here, house prices more reasonable than Paris and London. Um, and, you know, at the same time, I was really lucky to find a, a, a firm in Altige where there was the opportunity to work on some really fascinating projects with some great clients, be part of this really dynamic region. And, you know, we've been able to, you know, together really build the profile of the firm nationally within France and internationally, and, you know, work with international groups uh, and investors on their projects here in Toulouse. Thank you, Nicolas. Wonderful. So uh, maybe I will jump to uh, on, on what uh, the point that you made on the quality of uh, health, uh, maybe to, to raise a question to, to Craig. Uh, so and uh, since uh, at the time we, we raise, I raised this question, uh, please uh, get prepared to raise your own question. I know Kate will uh, transfer them to us. Uh, so please uh, get ready. So a, a question for Craig. Uh, uh, as to health and uh, and medical ecosystem, uh, was can you tell us more? Because you know Toulouse is known uh, for aviation and space. Uh, we mentioned a, a few uh, other items. Uh, health uh, and medical, uh, uh, in general, is also uh, important. Can, can you can you tell us more on why you you, you settled your R and D uh, uh, activities here in Toulouse on this very subject? Sure, no problem. Um... Yeah, so uh, as Jean-Claude says, um, Toulouse is probably not uh, the city that would immediately spring to mind when one thinks about uh, major um, health infrastructures, uh, but then there are not that many cities in the world which do immediately spring to mind if you ask your question, where are the major hospitals? Um, but actually the, um, the development of the, of the city around oncology research in particular over about the past decade has really created a, a world leading center of cancer research. There's an enormous research and teaching hospital. There's a phase one unit, which allows for uh, researchers to explore and elaborate their new medicines in uh, very early clinical trials. And, uh, and it's right next door to where we were looking to, to locate. So in fact, um, uh, from our perspective, then that was a, a strong favorable aspect of our location. Uh, why? Because if you if you can do research and development that's co-located um, with uh, research teaching and hospital facilities, then it generates a number of uh, advantageous elements, especially in the oncology field. Um, you can get access to patients, you can get access to human tissue, um, on which to do research, which then increases the probability of success of your research and development activities. And being able to run those, uh, jointly run those uh, phase one uh, experiments in humans for the, for the very early and pivotal stages of oncology research is, is a massive advantage. But then in addition to that, uh, as we were a growing organization, certainly expecting to grow and wanted to grow, um, the fact that there's around 100,000 students in Toulouse also creates an enormous opportunity for, uh, for networking into the local environment, not only from the medical side, but also from the, uh, the basic teaching and education perspective. And France has a fantastic uh, tertiary education system, the quality is enormously high, uh, and with a high volume of domestic students and local students, then it really allowed us to create an environment where we could see feedstock for recruitment, uh, access to uh, oncology expertise, patients, and uh, clinical translation, and then coupling that with, um, uh, with a, an attractive environment in which to not only recruit people, but to secure retention. Uh, being able to retain people in an environment is actually a lot to do with quality of life and whether or not they feel comfortable bringing up children and uh, whether or not they can get access to good schools and so on. And so in the area, we have very many aspects of that are very secure, including an international school for those who, who come from an international background. So a very international and welcoming city, great quality of life, very affordable, but then with this infrastructure wrapped around the universities and the, uh, and the Oncopole CRCT, so the, the cancer research um, uh, in Toulouse. 
Thank you, Craig. So uh, a nice uh, land landing uh, uh, place uh, for, to, to invest and to stay, uh, as you mentioned it. But uh, maybe, Nicolas, uh, for our United Kingdom friends in the context of, uh, of the Brexit or the post-Brexit, uh, what would, you, would be your pieces of advice uh, on uh, uh, why, why companies should, uh, should invest more in Toulouse than in uh, other places? Um... Okay, good question. Um, I think we have to separate that question out a little bit and, and look at the Brexit piece first and handle it with caution because, you know, it's early days. Uh, and then, you know, as regards the advantages of Toulouse as a city, you know, the points I'm going to make would apply regardless of Brexit. Um, but that said, if, if we start with Brexit, um, clearly this is an extremely complicated area because as an issue, it affects different sectors in different ways. Um, and so, you know, some businesses are going to be more impacted than others. Um, but if we are going to generalize, then perhaps one immediate consequence of Brexit is increased interest from British businesses in opening a subsidiary in the EU. Um, so, you know, that could be for a variety of reasons. Um, for example, if you provide consulting services in different member states, uh, where previously you did it directly from the UK, um, you might want to create an EU company to avoid mobility issues, uh, or you might want to set up a warehousing operation in the EU, so you receive consolidated loads from the UK. Um, or, you know, if you have quite a personal data intensive business, um, you might want to have a representative in, in the EU to be an interface with, with, with regulators, uh, you know, etc. There could, there could be loads of reasons. Um, and, and obviously, if that's your choice as a UK company, um, to create a subsidiary in Europe, um, then Toulouse is a really great place to do that um, with a lot of comparative advantages compared to other places in the EU. Um, so, you know, firstly, it's, it's the major transport hub. I think, you know, that's really important. Um, and um, we're, we're close-ish to the UK um, and there's multiple flights every day to, to London and, and, and other airports um, in, in Britain. Uh, you know, geographically, it's, it's close to Spain and it's kind of at a midpoint between Paris, Barcelona, Bordeaux, Marseille, you know, so there are these logistical advantages um, just geographically. Um, you know, secondly, if you work in certain sectors, um, including aeronautics and space, obviously, um, then, you know, the European ecosystem is, is, is here, essentially. Um, and, you know, thirdly, and I, I'm thinking from a UK perspective here, there are these long-standing cultural ties between the region and the UK, which we've already mentioned. There are lots of Brits who have second homes around here. Um, and then with that, there's the certain infrastructure and, and cosmopolitanism, which makes it a welcoming place for, for the British. Uh, you know, there's the international school uh, in Toulouse, which, which Craig mentioned. And also, you know, English speaking service providers, law firms, accountants, insurers. Um, and obviously that makes the, the company creation pro process reasonably painless um, and, and finally there are potential funding advantages depending on your sector so you know that could be through the region you know grants and things from uh, from the Occitanie region um, it could be through the French National Investment Bank okay um, BPI France um, and potentially through tax breaks for research which exists and are quite could be quite interesting for certain companies depending on your sector um, and then when you take all that into account you know Toulouse is really potentially among the most attractive places in the EU for, for a UK business to invest. Thanks Thank you much. Nicolas. Uh, so jumping on that because we are here we're speaking of um, on the general environment of uh, what Toulouse uh, actually can offer. Uh, Gilbert uh, you mentioned the, the, the reason why you invested uh, with regards to uh, mobility, but uh, what, 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 what would you say that the Toulouse ecosystem uh, in general uh, you know, took an important part in your decision to invest in Toulouse? Can, can you tell us a, a, a few words on that? Well, actually, it was, uh, it was not only important, it was actually a must-have. Uh, you can... You can live with an airport that is not uh, extremely convenient uh, in terms of uh, access, routes, and so on. You cannot live uh, in a place where you cannot recruit the people you need. Uh, so uh, I, I, there's no possible compromise. Um, setting up a company like Easy Mile uh, that is made of, uh, I would say, 60% uh, 
uh, R&D engineers and PhD uh, people uh, in a place uh, where you cannot recruit them uh, would just not be possible. Uh, so that that was uh, uh, yeah that was really a must have nothing like uh, nice to have. <laughs> okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Gilbert. And uh, I mean, looking at the the, the I mean the the space uh, I mean the general aerospace uh, ecosystem uh, in Toulouse that was basically uh, the 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 reasonable place uh, where we should tap in. Uh, but ultimately, when you look at the our staff now in Toulouse, uh, I mean, just in Toulouse, we are about 220 uh, people. Uh, I would say more than 50% of them uh, uh, have been recruited out of Paris. They have moved uh, to Toulouse. Uh, the typical uh, typical profile is, uh, I mean, between 30 and 40 years old. A uh, couple with young children, uh, I mean, with a, a, a reasonable uh, salary for an engineer in Paris, you cannot live decently. Uh, so, I mean, either you live in a, in a very short, uh, a very small apartment uh, downtown, uh, or you live in a decent apartment, but extremely far away from your workplace. Um, so... In, in that case, uh, companies uh, who can propose similar jobs uh, in, uh, in a place like Toulouse, uh, pretty sunny, uh, close to the sea, close to the mountains, uh, where the property market uh, is, uh, is extremely decent, uh, it's very attractive. Gilbert, you are describing my own life 25 years ago when I decided to move to Toulouse, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Well, my, I, I, I moved uh, from Singapore. Uh, the general manager is from Paris. Uh, our CFO is from Paris. Our head of legal is from Paris. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we are, it was to, to cover the point on, uh, on the way of life, the quality of life that is very important for when uh, you, you want to develop a company. But uh, Corinne, may, maybe now you can, uh, you mentioned on the local workforce. Uh, can you develop a little bit on uh, on you know what what's what, what needs to what should be said on the talents uh, that uh, can be recruited here in Toulouse? Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, uh, first of all, and, and it's highly highly qualified talent. So the the quality of of the the, the school, the education, the university is is excellent. Um, second and very important for us, I mean, again, we are an early stage startup, we are not yet profitable, so every, I would say every euro or every dollar really counts in terms of run rate for the company, and it's extremely cost effective uh, to, uh, to set up in, in, in Toulouse. Um, Gilbert made the point compared to Paris. I mean, I won't even start comparing to the Silicon Valley, you know, the gap, <laughs> the gap in salary, cost of living, uh, everything. So that's, you know, you're just not living in the same, in the same planet. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's extremely uh, cost effective um, for, for the, the activity we do, which is again, uh, highly skilled, uh, machine learning, NLP uh, engineer. Uh, the cost is roughly more than 30% cheaper than Paris, just as, as at least for the, the, the study we made uh, ourselves before, before deciding to move to Toulouse. And um, it's not only purely the, the cost of the staff, but you, know, you have extremely uh, um, talented, uh, you know, our external HR provider, our lawyers, you know, the, all the infrastructure you need to run a company, and especially when you are a small company, uh, all those costs are also much, uh, much cheaper. Um, another aspect which is not related to Toulouse itself directly, but to France is you have a number of uh, systems, uh, you have a extremely um, attractive R&D tax credit that we benefit because we are doing some uh, mainly R&D and, and deep tech and R&D at, at Align. You also, if you're a small startup, you have something for young small company, uh, jeune entreprise innovante, which again reduce the cost of running the company. So it's uh, 
I wouldn't say the cost in absolute value, but the 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 cost for the talent you get is 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 one of the best, if not of the best place I've seen. And and you know, going back to my uh, uh, my past uh, work experience, I've been working in uh, in around twenty five countries in Asia, in Europe, in the Middle East, in, in Europe. So, uh, and, and this is definitely the most cost effective structure I had so far in my you know, 25, 30 years uh, career. So that's, uh, yeah, absolutely to sum it up, long answer uh, to your question, uh, Jean-Claude, but uh, yeah, the uh, top quality uh, engineer for a very, very competitive cost, very important for us in the decision. Thank you, Corinne. Uh, so maybe to come back to, to Craig, um, you know, you, you are, your, your accent shows that you are not a French citizen. Uh, could, could, you, could you tell us a little bit on uh, the international uh, connections or how much you know, Toulouse is an international city, actually? So first of all, I'm, I'm absolutely devastated that my, my French accent has not passed the first test, Jean-Claude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, clearly, clearly I'm not from Toulouse uh, or France, um, uh, but Toulouse is a very international environment. And I think it's, um, I mean, I, I've been in Toulouse seven years, so it's not really for me to comment on, on what the, the real longevity of that international environment really comes from. But I imagine that it's, it's born out of Airbus, it's born out of the um, aeronautics industry, uh, being a, a multinational environment um, uh, between the UK, Spain, Germany, and France, of course, then inevitably that brings a certain international workforce into the city at the rate of growth that, that Jean-Claude mentioned. And as a result, then, uh, there are many infrastructural aspects that uh, then enable people who are not French to be able to slot into the, to the community and to exist and to work and to live. Nick mentioned some important points like uh, being able to access um, English speaking services, essential services, tax and legal and, and um, relocation services and so on. And that's really very important when you're trying to bring someone to an environment like Toulouse from, from abroad and you're trying to encourage them to relocate, then it's very important that they already have access to uh, soft landing, if you like, from, a, from an English speaking perspective and they have an environment where such as the international school or bilingual schools, of which there are a number. Um, it creates an environment which feels like it's tolerant, welcoming, and, and um, uh, anglophone, if you like. And so from Very our point of view, there are, um, sorry, just one comment, I think it's, it's uh, one other comment is, is been very important for us is that uh, we see a lot of French people who are very well educated have gone out and done PhDs, postdocs, and, and a work experience internationally, the United States, Switzerland, the UK, who want to come back. And so having that internationalism is also an attractive element, even for French nationals coming back to the city. Thank you, Craig. It's true that uh, be it from, uh, you know, the academies, uh, uh, the research centers or the industries, there are, there are so many connections to the on all, uh, you know, all countries in the world. Uh, but now to jump on another point, uh, maybe for Nicolas, the, the, this question, uh, you know, the, the French administration is sometimes uh, famous. Uh, I don't know if it's good or not. Uh, what, 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 could you react to that? You know, how, what, what, what uh, how, you know, an investor from the United Kingdom, well, how, how he would feel the, the, the French administration? Um, well, I think that's a bit of a, a myth or a stereotype, maybe, um, which is no longer true, if it, if it ever was. Um, the reality today, I, I would say, just, just in my experience, is that um, France is, broadly speaking, a, a business friendly jurisdiction. Um, and, you know, maybe more so I've, I've been, so I mean, I, I'm, I'm a dual qualified lawyer, so I started off my career in, in the city of London and then I moved to Paris with my previous firm. So I guess I've been practicing in France for six, seven years now. And, and, I, and I think that that kind of increasingly business friendly environment has, has kind of come in over the last, uh, yeah, 
six, seven years. Um, you know, and we've seen that with figures for foreign direct investment over the last couple of years, where France has been the leading European destination for uh, foreign direct investment, you know, ahead of the UK and Germany. Um, and, you know, the reality on the ground for us as a, as a law firm is that, um, in our experience, company creation, at least, is, is pretty straightforward and uh, navigable for investors from around the world. You know, if you've created a company in the UK, then you should be that disoriented by the French system. Um, you know, you're going to need articles of association, a company office, um, you know, which you can get through a domiciliation provider, uh, a bank account. Um, and, you know, obviously that's subject to the same KYC and money laundering checks as, as, as in the UK. Um, and, you know, just, just from the purely setup and company creation point of view, you know, that, that, that's it, basically. You, you, you register the company. It's, it's pretty quick and reliable. Um, you know, certainly with the Toulouse Trading Companies Register, once you've sent in your registration documents, assuming everything's in order, then you know your company will be created in, in, in a couple of days or a few days. Uh, and, then, and then you're away. And, and, and obviously you have to do annual filings and payroll, um, AGMs, but, but you know, all that stuff is part of running a company in, 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 in any country. Um, and and you know, an advantage of France is that it's a rule of law jurisdiction. You know, you have a, a stable legal and business environment, which means means that you can plan, you know, you can make investment decisions with, with, with confidence. And, you know, unfortunately, in other parts of Europe, you know, we, we're seeing the value of that now. But, you know, that, that, that kind of stability and, and having a legal framework that we can understand and, 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 and make decisions based on. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. Th thank you, Nicola. So well, what you say is that uh... Uh, the, the, this reputation of the French administration is a non-deserved reputation. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I think it, it, it depends on, I, I mean, you know, it, I've worked in the UK and, and, and in France, you know, and, and um, in the UK you can have issues with tax authorities, HMRC, as you can in France with, um, uh, with, with the administration fiscale, you know, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the way of the world and and um you know actually there have been more kind of business friendly reforms in the last five six years um you know in terms of uh, labor law for example which give more kind of predictability for businesses um and as we as we've seen you know um with with, with the other panelists there are tax breaks available for for r d um you know it's, it's it's not kind of black and white well france is a high tax jurisdiction with very complicated administration and it's hard to do business there. Um, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages, um, but by and large, you know, companies are created here and they succeed and they grow. Um, and, um, you know, we, we see that with the panel today. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. So on the, not on the same subject, but almost a question to, to Gilbert on uh, how, how you know could you uh, have you been uh, assisted by uh, the the team of uh, invest in toulouse you know the uh, this our uh, development agency in toulouse uh, can you describe a little bit uh, how how much you have been uh, assisted on that matter well I, I actually they have been uh, very helpful on uh, on on um, an incredibly uh, important topic for me uh, that was finding uh, a, a place uh, to test uh, our our solutions. I mean, even though EasyMile is a software company, at one point we develop uh, autonomous driving technology, so you have to drive somewhere. Uh, so at one point you need to put vehicles on the road, and obviously before putting those vehicles on public roads, uh, you have to put them in a test environment. And finding such a place uh, nearby Toulouse was uh, quite a challenge. Uh, the the I would say regular services of uh, invest in Toulouse uh, it's something that uh, honestly I haven't used that much uh, the reason being that uh, I mean before ending up in, in Toulouse uh, I have already opened offices in Beijing in Seoul uh, in Melbourne in Singapore in Hong Kong uh, in uh, uh, whatever in even in Bali um, so I, I know how to set up a company, I know how to recruit people, uh, I know how to sell, uh, but uh, that, uh, at one point when you need to find a 
20 hectares uh, of uh, uh, decommissioned uh, military base. Uh, it's something that you cannot do on your own. <laughs> you need some no, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Gilbert. And this is Ma what we got. <laughs> So we, we have been very helpful on that. So uh, thank you. So uh, last question to Corinne, maybe. Uh, so you described to, with whom you have been working so far. So uh, are you planning to work so, uh, with labs and universities as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. And then the, uh, I mentioned, obviously, uh, ANITI, uh, the Artificial and, and nat Natural Intelligence uh, Toulouse Institute and some other organizations so we work with uh, already with uh, uh, some of the the, the, the schools so NSET to give to give a few names and in discussion with other lab and university uh, to run some project uh, together and the the interaction uh, so far is uh, it's very easy to work with so we've been able to meet obviously in Toulouse but to continue remotely from from San Francisco to um, uh, to Toulouse and, and, and very accessible. So the, yeah, we, we are planning to, to do so, to continue. And so far, you know, being uh, uh, across uh, uh, the Atlantic has not been a, an issue for us to, uh, to engage and, 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 and collaborate. Um, I may also go back to your, your, the question you, you asked to, to Gilbert. We actually have been helped a lot by investing in Toulouse, the agency, and uh, uh, that's been extremely helpful so um, to, to, to work uh, with the, the agency. So we didn't need, uh, you know, 20 acres of uh, military, ex-military <laughs> sites. Uh, you know, we just need pretty much a good Wi-Fi connection and, uh, and a few people and, 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 and being able to, uh, to, to code. But uh, yeah, extremely helpful. That was also part of the decision. Extremely professional uh, help we had. And again, uh, we've done... And maybe that's not a point, uh, that's less of a point today, but we've opened the office last year uh, in the middle of COVID and COVID restrictions. So we've been able to do everything remotely from California because we couldn't travel. So, uh, you know, setting up the company, uh, bank account, everything, the payroll, hiring people, everything was done remotely because we couldn't physically uh, travel and invest in Toulouse has been key to help us. And so that's totally feasible and, and I would say relatively easy to, to set up a, a company in Toulouse, uh, even you know, uh, when there are transport restrictions. So just wanted to add, to build on, on Gilbert's <laughs> point that for right. just the setup of the company, the invest in Toulouse has been has been extremely helpful. Thank you, thank you very much, Corinne. Uh, may I now let the floor to to our audience? Uh, if Kate can uh, try to pass through a, a few questions. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everybody. That's that's been really really insightful. Um, we've had a few questions coming in from our media guests, so thank you for those. First question comes from Carol. Um, it's a very good point. When it comes to the quality of life and getting the work life balance in Toulouse, um, here in the UK we tend to work all the hours God sends. Do businesses in Toulouse adopt more sensible working hours? I don't know who wants to jump in with a with a response to that one. Who, who wants to answer? May I, uh, Craig? Maybe you want to react to that. I'll try and start, and if anyone else wants to add anything, then please do. Of course, uh, France has the famous Working Time Directive, which uh, imposes certain legal boundaries on how much uh, how much working time is expected without recuperation. Um, and and as a result, I would say that uh, the 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 work life balance that certainly I see in France is that people generally actually work very long, but then also um, take take steps to actively look after uh, taking rest. And so I think that's that's what I see in, uh, in Evatech and, and beyond is that um, the working hours in France are actually, for each working day, are actually quite long, but, but, but there is a reciprocality, if that's the word, to, to then take recuperation, rest, recharge, that's also very high value time. And uh, respecting that balance is is um, is pretty standard in French companies, I would say. And of course, you know, with the favourable weather, then when you go home in the evening, um, if you've got the opportunity to enjoy an evening out rather than an evening in because it's not raining, then of course that makes the the recharge time much more um, beneficial. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. 
Uh, is there another question? Yes, indeed. I think we've probably touched on this, particularly from Gilbert and Corinne, but a couple of people were asking about the role of uh, invest and to lose and the advantages, I guess, of involving the organisation from the beginning. I don't know, Craig, if you want to touch on that from your side or, or Nicholas, on, from the perspective of, of your clients and your experience of that, um, feel free to jump in, whoever thinks, thinks best on that one. Yeah, maybe I maybe I can just pick up on one of Nick's comments earlier on because Nick faced a question about uh, French bureaucracy and um, and the famous <laughs> you know famous red tape. Um, I would say that actually from from our experience, investing to lose was actually one of the fantastic contributors to help navigate exactly that aspect. Right, so um, we had a special project which was to do with bioproduction. It was actually investing to lose who spotted the opportunity and then created the connectivity between. Uh, between the metropole, so the city, the region, the national government, the BPI France, the, and, and help to create the environment around which we could then navigate that, um, that, that uh, levels of, of French government and therefore gain French government support at every level. So um, there, are, there are obviously many ways that Invest in Toulouse helps businesses either through startup, finding land for Gilbert, or indeed helping us navigate the the various levels of um, required bureau bureaucracy to achieve our goals. Thank you, Craig. And just one final question um, before Jean-Claude um, wraps up there. Um, I know we've talked a lot about the, the, um, the international kind of logistics and, and things like that for businesses, but someone was asking about how easy it actually is to work with clients and suppliers on an international level um, I don't know if anyone wants to expand on, on that a little bit. Um, I know we've talked about connectivity, for example, but anything else to add to that one? Uh, who wants to answer this one? May I let the floor, maybe Corinne, you want to, 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 answer, to jump on this one? Uh, sure, I can, I can jump on this, this one. Uh, um, again, we, we do we do purely software so i would say in terms of our own supplier it's uh, i would say it's relatively easy technology wise and and i already mentioned infrastructures in, in toulouse um uh we are again a very global company and um uh, from toulouse it was easy first of all to to, to have some pre preliminary meetings with potential customers in the city but you know, we, we address several verticals, including the finance, the finance industry. So the majority of banks are, as you know, in Paris, in London, Hong Kong, New York, and other places. And you know, we are able to operate uh, very easily with with those. Um, I used to have again in, in in my past, the companies were more based in one of those locations. But you can very easily now work from Toulouse, and you know take the train or the plane, have a meeting in, if you really need an in-person meeting, have a meeting in London or in Paris, you know, you do the, you do the trip uh, intraday and, and you're back home, as Craig mentioned, to uh, enjoy a nice evening on the, on the sun. So uh, from my perspective, there is no constraint. But again, we, you know, our supplier, is, we are a technology company, so we don't have, you know, suppliers mm -hmm. of, of uh, of tools or, or, or large machine or large equipment. So that's on a pure software basis. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. Um, I think those are the main questions. I'm just very mindful of time. Jean-Claude, I know you had a very quick question for everyone just as part of your wrap up. Do you want to, to put that to, to the group? I think we were gonna ask uh, just to sum up in one sentence, any advice on businesses considering a move to Toulouse? Okay, so then uh, in one sentence, so you have all explained uh, your 13 reason why uh, you set up in <laughs> Toulouse. Uh, now I just need a one in one sentence, uh, you know, why? <laughs> so Craig, you first. Uh, talent and retention. Good. So Nicolas? Uh, I would say good place to live highly developed uh, business infrastructure. That's two things. Anyway. Okay, Corinne? <laughs> Extremely efficient for young startups. Wonderful, and Gilbert? Yeah, life, life quality. Quality of life, wonderful. Yeah. 
Okay, so thanks to everyone. So if I, if I may wrap up in, a, in one word, actually, because uh, what, what I felt after listening to everything you said, I would say one word would be interconnections, actually. You know, Toulouse is everything about uh, interconnecting the, the, the people within the company, so from uh, students, uh, employees, researchers, uh, customers, uh, bankers, law firms, etc., uh, but also connecting to the outside world uh, in, on a variety of domains, so aeronautics and space, of course, but also uh, health, uh, digital, uh, environment, uh, biotech, uh, agrotech, etc., uh, biomed. Uh, so really a, a, pla a, place to, a place to settle, so welcome to all our United Kingdom friends. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, everybody, for joining.